Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament's channel. Since my last video, many of you gave me requests on which problems to do next. As you wished, this time we are demonstrating IYPT 2020 problem number 7, Ball on a String. Before we start, I have a few announcements to make. First, the problem that plagued our reference page is finally resolved. We will have our Head of Student Resources, Raymond Lin, be responsible for the upkeep of the page from now on. The COIPT 2020 problems will be released on October 1st, 2019, so if you're watching this in Canada, please stay tuned for that. Be sure to watch our previous IYPT 2020 videos and like our COIPT Facebook page and also our COIPT Memes page. You're probably becoming impatient, so now let's start on ball on a string. The problem statement tells us that when we put a string through a ball with a hole in it, such that the ball can move freely along the string, and when we attach another ball to the end of the string, when you move the free end periodically, you can observe complex movement of the two balls. The problem wants us to investigate the phenomenon. To make the system, I got some of these wood beads with a hole in the middle and a nylon string. The fixed ball can be attached by applying some glue to it. To reduce the friction between the upper ball and the string, I used the bench vise to press metal nuts into the hole. I chose to use a piece of nylon string for the same reason. You can try to use cotton strings, but I found that the strings can often get caught and restrict the motion of the upper ball. The problem did not explicitly say what the complex motion is. I believe that the motion it refers to is what's called a vertical orbit. The lower ball travels around the upper ball. The plane of the orbit is largely parallel with the direction of gravity, hence the name the vertical orbit. In some videos, it is described that the orbit can be clockwise or counterclockwise, but in reality, the orbit is not just restricted to these two directions. There are a few things that we can learn by observing the motion. First, the motion can be made to be periodic. This system obviously responds very differently to different initial conditions and driving forces. It is impossible to achieve a perfectly periodic motion with just your hand, but with the dynamic stabilization of your hand, you can keep the motion going and recover the motion if it begins to run away. Under the assumption that there is a periodic motion, the period of the force must match exactly with the period of the orbit. Any deviations will take the system away from its previous state. This also suggests that the energy added to the system must be identical to the energy lost. We can also see that the top portion and bottom portion of the string moves in very different ways. The top portion swings a bit like a pendulum. The bottom portion are in circular motion around the top ball. Knowing the differences, we can also conclude that these two motions also have the same period. When we change the amount of energy in the system, we can observe large and small orbits. Clearly, large orbits have a longer period compared to smaller orbits. A more subtle thing that I observed is about the way the orbiting ball passes the swing portion of the string. If we look at the motion from above, we can see that the ball must pass the swinging string from either one side or the other. Sometimes when the ball always passes on one side, we could see the plane of the orbit begins to process. But other times, the ball will pass the string once on one side and then once on the other side. Then there is no longer this precession effect. I'm not even quite sure if this phenomenon is real. With my current setup, it is impossible to repeat the initial conditions. I would love to know what you think about this. I must admit, looking at the slow motion videos raised more questions for me than it answered. I think I'll make a part 2 of this video in the future. In the meantime, I'll continue to play around with it and see what I'll find. I hope this demonstration can get you started on your own exploration. 
If you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.